Coming up in this episode of the Curse Steel Podcast, I look at the ways Lions rookies showed up and show out versus the Giants. And I talk about how the new defensive line coach had the pass rush humming on Friday night. Buckle up, Buttercup. It's time to start the show. What up, do and welcome to the Curry Steel Podcast, your trusted source for Detroit Lions news and rumors. I'm your host, Curry Steel. If you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it with fellow Lions fans just like yourself. Follow me on your favorite social media platforms and visit CurrySteel.com. Today is Monday, August 14th, 2023. Shout out to my family over at Lions Nation Unite. Let's get to it. First, let's look at some player moves that happened this weekend. In a surprise move, Detroit waved cornerback Tay Hayes. I thought the young brother played well in preseason action. Apparently, so did the Ravens, who claimed them off waivers. Lions signed cornerback Kobe Richardson to the team to replace Hayes and released center Ross Pierce Barker with the injury settlement. Chris Barker got injured in the preseason game versus the Giants. Now, if he clears waivers, he will revert to the Lions injury reserve list. The Lions have an open roster spot at the moment, so let the speculation begin on who the team will bring next. Now, let's get into some action about the rookies, how they played on Friday night. First round draft pick, Jameer Gibbs had 37 all-purpose yards and approximately about a half a quarter of action Versus the Giants, I think he played a little bit longer than that. He ran for 19 yards on six carries with a 3.2 yards per air carry average. Excuse me. Now the guy showed patience when he ran through the hole. Kind of just like let the holes develop, and then he showed good burst through the hole. Now Gibbs was not afraid of contact. The young fella lowered them shoulders and at the point of contact and finished runs aggressively. Now on his kiss catch. He, if y'all haven't seen it, the dude just bailed out Nate Suffield on a scramble drill, caught a pass, and got up the field for 19 yards and a first down for the Lions in their first quarter of action. However, his most, this is to me, his most impressive place came away from the ball in pass protection. Gibbs picked up some blitzing defenders and kept keep Nutfield, Nate Sutfield, his name escapes me because I pop bad he played, but he kept Sutfield Cleaning the pocket on a few occasions, man. I like what he did in the past game. Not catching passes, just but he made sure he was good in pass protection, and that shows that he's a three-down back potentially for the Lions. It's going to be hard to keep that young fella off the field, you know, no matter who's in the back there with him. Okay, now his fellow first-round draft pick, Jack Campbell, played well in his first professional snaps. Captain Jack tied the lead. Uh, the lead for the team with four tackles for the game, with two of them being solo. He had a pass breakup as well. Here's what's impressive for me. The dude was decisive in his movements. Even when he overran a play, he made sure he was able to adjust and get back to his spot to make a play on the ball. Captain Jack had an impressive uh, debut. So, you know, he proves why the Lions did pick him uh, with their second first-round draft pick. Let's head back over to the offense, man. Undrafted free agent Chase Cota looked like the second coming of Tom Kennedy. The dude had caught everything, man, thrown his way. The former Oregon Duck led the team with 60 yards receiving on four catches. Now, Dylan Drummond had a couple catches as well. You know, that uh, highly touted undrafted free agent, that dude's been showing up and just killing it right now in camp. And then Antoine Green, the seven-round draft pick, he had three catches as well. It was a solid showing by those rookie receivers from the Lions. Now, let's get back to the defense. Starling Thomas, y'all know who that dude is, man. If you don't know, man, you better check his record. The dude has been playing solid in coverage. Uh, he did during the game. Nah, but his secondary teammate, another undrafted free agent player for the Lions, safety Brandon Joseph. That dude had three tackles, uh, and one of those was for loss. And he had an interception that sealed the game for the Lions. 
So you look at these undrafted free agents, man. You had a couple big at with wide right receiver and then in the secondary. So I'm liking what we're seeing from these uh, guys who didn't get drafted. But one guy who did get drafted and just walked in the building like he was professional already is Brian Brantz. He looked like a pro already, man. That dude was just flying around the field. And uh, we know he had that bad 40 time at the combine, and that helped Brad Holmes go ahead and lock that dude up in the second round and bring him to Detroit. He hit Cole Beasley so hard on the tackle for loss, man. Beasley's tile just came off, man. Brantz will be. He will be the still other draft in 2023. You make no ifs, no ands, no buts about it, man, because he's getting to that him status real quick. Overall, the rookie uh, class looked good. Now, one guy I didn't mention was Sam LaPorter. Guy had a drop pass on one target, but he was good in pass protection as well. And he had the block that helped seal off a defender to let Nate Sudfield throw that pass to Jameer Gibbs uh, on that 19-yard play we talked about earlier. So LaPorter didn't show up as far as in the stats for receiving, but he did show up in his pass protection and his run blocking as well. So shout out to the young fella. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop me a comment. I'll get back to you when I can. Hit the notification bell so you know when you're getting a fresh video right here on the channel. For more Lions content from me, visit KurtSteel.com. You can find the links to my articles on Sideline Report and YardBarker.com right there on the homepage. Please follow me on your favorite social media platforms. You can find those links on the homepage of KurtSteel.com as well. That's also the link to get yourself some Kurt Steel gear from the Lions Nation Unite shop. Y'all see the hat, man. Y'all see the, the regal lion on there. Man, y'all see that boss up, ball out shirt, man. So go over to the Lions Nation Unite shop. Links on KurtSteel.com says Kurt Steel gear. And grab yourself some gear, man. You know, support the brother out, man. Help me out, man. Help me make, help me make, this, make this channel the best it can be for you. The Lions defensive line made it life miserable for the giant quarterbacks on Friday night's preseason game. New defensive line coach. If y'all know who this cat is, y'all better check it out who this dude is, man. John Scott, his influence showed why Aaron Glenn added him to the staff this offseason to replace Todd Wash. Now, Scott was coming from the college ranks where he was the defensive line coach and the defensive run coordinator at Penn State, you know. The other Lions, but you know, the Lions, but I, I digress. Now, he has worked hand in hand with linebackers coach Kelvin Shepard to revamp the front seven of the Lions this season. They have two points of emphasis they wanted to improve from last season gap discipline from the linebackers, which, you know, Calvin Shepard is, you know, mainly there for with some help from crossover from Scott. But and another is setting the edge by those uh, defensive end and outside linebackers, you know, and some of those defensive backs mixed in as well. The Lions showed improvement in all those areas versus the Giants, man. They had one run that kind of broke out, but they kept that running game intact most of the most of the game. The linebackers played sound, gap discipline, and those edge rushers set the edge where the guys couldn't get out and get loose. Now, if you look at what he did at Penn State. That's the kind of defense he ran. It was an attacking style uh, front where they rushed the passer and they stopped the run on the way to get into the quarterback. Now, his team, Penn State, led the Big Ten Conference with 42 sacks in 2022. Well, that's not a lot. Actually, it is because they only played 13 games in college. The defensive line for the, for the Detroit Lions, if you – Watch that game, man. For the first, I mean, they just really apply pressure from the start to finish of that game. I noticed in the first half, the disruption really came from the interior of the defensive line. You had John Kaminsky getting in there, Josh Cascal, where they were going in and out playing that smaller defensive tech, uh, defensive tackle techniques. And then you had Benito Jones, the big fella. You know, that dude had a tackle for loss, a, uh, a sack, and a batted pass. But let's look at that second half, man. That belonged to the edge rushers. I mean, James Houston. I mean, he was a problem. Now, he didn't record a sack, 
but he was constantly applying pressure uh, to the quarterbacks off the edge, man. He caused the, the quarterbacks to move the pocket several times, and he caused a couple of those sacks to happen in the second half. Now, the Quar brothers, they put on a pass rush clinic versus the New York Giants, man. Big brother Romeo had a sack versus his former team. However, you know what I'm saying, sometimes a little brother going to outshine the big brother, and little brother Julian had two sacks in the third quarter and a sack on the Giants' final drive that caused the fourth and 15, which led to Brandon Joseph last-minute, I guess, interception on a, just a heave down the field by the Giants' quarterback to seal the game. Scott's influence on that defensive line showed up early and often on Friday night. The Lions, look at the stat line. The Lions had five sacks, 11 tackles for loss, and six quarterback hits. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of this new defense and what we're seeing out of John Scott's new scheme, helping out that defense with Aaron Glenn on that defensive line along with Calvin Shepard. It's going to be fun to watch this group. And think about this. The starters really didn't play. I mean, you had a few guys. The the one starter that I saw that was in the lineup um, was the big fella, uh, Isaiah Bugs, But everyone else was out. Aline McNeil didn't play. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson didn't play. Charles Harris didn't play. So a lot of the starters on the defensive line did not suit up and play on Friday night. So if they can do that, that stat line, five sacks with the backup guys, it's going to be fun to watch these guys in the regular season. It's time for dessert with Kurt. Sweet bits of news and notes about the Detroit Lions, our favorite team. New Lions defensive back and vocal leader C.J. Gardner-Johnson recently donated $5,000 to the Detroit King football team. And he chipped in another $2,490 to the Green Gridiron Club in support of the Cast Tech football team. Gardner-Johnson is making a difference on the Lions, on the field, and in the community. And that's your dessert with Kurt for 14 August 2023. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of the Kurt Steele Podcast, your trusted source for Detroit Lions news and rumors. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop me a comment. I'll get back to you when I can. Hit the notification bell so you know when you're getting fresh videos from me right here on the channel. For more Lions content, head over to KurtSteele.com. You can find the links from my articles from Sideline Report and YardBarker.com right there on the homepage. Do your man Kurt Steele a favor. Whatever you do in life, you got to bow up, bow out, and be the best version of you that you can be. This is Kurt Steele, and I will holla at you real soon. <laughs>